Hello everybody, in this week's episode, you're with me in Turkey as I'm photographing a personal project. I thought it was a great opportunity to talk about mastering manual mode to get better architecture and interior photography. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is James Kerwin and this, this is me. I'm an architecture and interior photographer from the UK that is now based in Istanbul. I love shooting heritage, abandoned places, relics, ruins, hidden gems and ghost towns, as well as off the beaten path locations all around the world. You can catch my content weekly, well, when life doesn't take over. So why don't you join me for the ride by subscribing and you can also check out my website in the description below. So I actually think that manual mode, if you're a beginner photographer, is actually easier in architecture photography. And I'm gonna explain how and why later on in this video. But let's be honest, the first thing we need to do to do this, to get it in manual mode, is to put our camera as usual on a tripod. To photograph in manual mode, I think realistically, it always is gonna to have to be on a tripod, especially for interior work. We're using a tripod for getting sharp and great results. And I've talked about that many times on the channel before. I think it helps you to visualize the scene when you're on a tripod, because if you're gonna switch on to live view in particular, and then use manual mode, of course, you can just step away from your camera at any given moment and just assess the scene in front of you as well as the back of the camera. So that's the first thing, getting the camera on that tripod. So anytime I'm shooting on a tripod, of course, I make sure that my two second timer is on. We wanna basically not have vibrations in the camera when I'm pressing the shoot button here on the front. So to do that, I'm gonna just quickly select that on, go back to this menu and we can actually just rotate through the timer and put the two second one on, which is uh, perfect. We can go back to live view there. Make sure you've got charged batteries. So any of you that are watching this, of course, know what manual mode is and where to find it on your own camera. I don't need to explain that, but I am using the Canon R5. And for that, there's a great big mode button on the top. So it's very easy to switch between the different shoot modes in the camera. First of all, make sure we're in camera mode, not filming, which I am, and mode button is on the back here. That brings up a menu with basically aperture priority, shutter priority. So shutter priority in many cameras is TV. Aperture priority is AV, of course. You've got bulb modes, you've got custom function modes, which are usually C1, 2, and in this camera, 3 as well. P mode, which is a program, which basically the camera is kind of controlling many aspects of your shoot. Uh, flexible priority mode, which I don't think I've ever used. And of course, there's an auto, uh, like automatic scene intelligence, which is the camera's using everything for you, and I do not recommend that. And finally, you've got manual, the big M, the big scary M. And we're gonna be selecting that for this shoot. So the fundamentals of architecture photography are f-stop, and ISO. So we're going to lock those in and we're going to fix those down here first of all. Now the first thing I've done is activated live view. You'll see that here. Now to do that on this camera it's fairly easy. You just cycle through the info button and on your camera if you don't know how I'd recommend trying to do so. Sometimes you press the play button, other times you press the kind of live view button. There's a particular button just for it and it depends on your model of camera and also uh, make as well. But for this one, we just cycle through the modes using info. But of course, with the R5, you can actually change the setup of all of the buttons. And uh, for me, that is where I've placed it. But now we're on live view, what we're going to do is we're going to look at locking down those settings. So first of all, we're photographing the 24mm lens and the sharpest aperture on this lens is f8. So we're going to lock that one in. And to do that on this camera, all we do is we change the move the mode here that's actually uh, next to the set button. So nice and simple. I'm going to lock down here to f8, sharpest point of this lens. Next thing is we're going to look at our ISO. Now mine's currently set to 320, which is probably a bit high for this scene. I've got floorboards in here, wood floors, so I do need to keep an eye on that. There would be some vibrations or movement if I'm not careful, which could creep into my exposures. And I don't want to do that. So the first thing I want to do is just make sure that that ISO is the kind of right number for this particular scene. And I've talked about ISO just recently on the channel and that's linked above. It really depends on how long you've got on site, 
the kind of flooring that you're fixed down to, and also kind of a kind of photograph that you're trying to capture. Is there going to be movement in it or not? So for me earlier there was, I captured light beams coming in on the left hand window here. So I increased my ISO to get faster shutter speed times to freeze some of those uh, the rays coming in. But now that sun's completely drifted away. So what I'm going to do is get that ISO to around 200 just to compensate a little bit for the floorboards. But there is quite a lot of light in here. So I'm going to basically do that now. And to do that we use next to the mode button there's another dial and that changes our ISO. And we're currently on 320, so I'm going to bring that down. My screen, as you can see, is a lot darker now. So the two components we have locked in are f-stop and ISO. Now with f-stop, it really depends on the depth that you want sharp and in focus in your scene. Most of the time I'm going for sharp front to back, in which case we're using like f7.1 to roughly f11. And it depends on your camera and lens setup. If you want something with shallow depth of field, say you're focusing on railings or staircase and you want the rest of it, or banister say, you might want things kind of like blown out behind it, in which case you're looking at 2.8, 3.5, 4.5 and lower f-stop numbers. But for this kind of scene, we're looking at kind of like getting things front to back sharp. So it's always a balancing act between the flooring that you're on, the amount of time you have on site. And I say that because imagine you've got 90 minutes on site and you want to capture the whole place, you want to get many images, then to, sh to speed yourself up on site, the best thing to do is to boost your ISO. And in modern cameras, you can do that easily. In fact, I'm not going to talk any more about ISO because I've talked about that really recently on the channel, link just above here. And you can kind of deep dive into the reasons for using various ISO settings. So the one setting that leaves is shutter speed. And now because we've got it on a tripod, we're on live view, we've locked down those other two settings. We're technically now only got to mess around with shutter speed to change our exposure. So even though we're in manual mode, and manual mode has many options, has full control, we're technically only using one setting to adjust all of our settings to capture this scene. So here, what I'm going to be doing is using the front, there's a front dial just here, and I'm actually going to be rotating that to change my exposure in live view. If I do it here, you can actually see it even here, look. So the slower we go, the brighter the scene, longer exposure times. The shorter we go, the darker the scene, as you can see here, the faster shutter speed times. Simple as that. Now shutter speed really depends on how much motion you want in the scene. For us here, we're just photographing an empty old mosque. So it's nice and simple, we want no movement in our scene. But if we're introducing like ghostly figures or models and we want still subjects in there, then everything changes. But for this, we're not. So what we can do is we can just check our exposure bar, get our metering on point, and basically it says here zero. As we change our shutter speed at this point, the bar moves on the camera and with that changes the exposure settings. So it's really easy. We're using that one setting to change everything now. We're controlling all of the kind of look and feel of the image just through shutter speed. So when we press the info button here on the back of the camera, we can go through the different like views of the, the screen. Live views activated, but if I press it once, it brings up the histogram. Now that's something I use quite a lot, but with experience, I've used it less and less. But when you're starting out and you're in this mode, I'd probably recommend doing this. To the left is crushed blacks, to the right is crushed whites or highlights. And of course, what we want to be able to do here is use our shutter speed to make sure that neither of those things are happening. Of course, in modern cameras, you can lift your shadows, but you cannot reduce highlights still, even to this day. So if we're starting with a, a nicely exposed image in here, I think we are. Let me just shoot that and just see what it looks like when we, when we press shoot. Check it out. To be honest with you, everything's fine. One bracket, one shot, f8, 0.4 of a second. So the other tip I'm going to give you, and I've talked about this before recently as well, is focus peaking. This is a manual lens. So by activating in the camera's menu, focus peaking, on the back of this LCD, we can highlight in sharp areas with colors, red, blue, and yellow. I activate this uh, to assist me and it, show, it highlights what areas are sharp in our scene. And of course, if we lock down F8, most things should be highlighting red. And I choose red in architecture because yellow isn't a great color for interiors. You've got sunlight and blue 
It could be an option, but sometimes I find it difficult to see. It depends on your eyesight and, and you and your camera settings. Once we've activated focus peak, and there's also another focus box that we can use where it's got little green triangles that do this and come together as things are in focus. And it nails like that. I'll show you it now in camera. So of course, when you're photographing something like this, a subject like this, there could be other challenges as well. There could be reflections, for which case you might want a polarizer added to the front of this, which would, again, alter your um, shutter speed, and you'd need to compensate for that in the back of the camera. The other things that you might have is you might need, you might have quite a dynamic scene with very, very dark shadows and very bright highlights, in which case you might need to exposure bracket. When the camera's in this position, and we're using manual mode again, Bracketing is now simple because what we're doing here is we can activate bracketing simply on the back of the camera in this mode. Once that's on, we could actually just bracket the scene as well if we needed to. I don't need to. The other things that might happen is you might have things like changing scene, light changing rapidly in the scene. We can easily compensate for those changing lighting conditions by just adjusting the shutter speed in camera as we've already discussed. So I'd go as far as to say that manual mode for me is on my camera probably 90% of the time. All of my portfolio images for architecture are shot in manual mode and I rarely jump into aperture priority or other priority modes. For me, it's a better way of understanding how the camera works. You can get to grips with things better and read the light in the scene and adjust accordingly. And using live view along with that kind of focus peaking method that I've showed you in this video and other videos linked above, you can kind of uh, really bring the best out of your work. And with it being on a tripod, your camera, you can kind of like slow down, focus on the scene, and using those manual settings, you can kind of dial in what you want. You know, most of the time in architecture, we're shooting, like I said, on F8, sharpest point in our lens, low ISO. So really, all you're focusing on is that shutter speed. I know people also photograph models in these locations and other architectural interior locations these days. So for me, as well, that's another great tip for you, is if you're doing that kind of photography, putting your camera on the tripod, putting it on manual mode, dialing in your settings, you might want a slightly narrower aperture, of course, but that is all you're gonna be focusing on. Again, your shutter speed, you adjust it to suit the scene. Your ISO is maybe a bit higher for a model shoot, but ultimately, it's much easier to control what you're doing using that manual method that I've showed you there. Okay, so that pretty much concludes this week's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've been on the tips and tricks a lot lately, but the next video from here in Turkey is going to be more location-based. I hope you've enjoyed this one. I hope it's given you some insight into how I think manual mode works and actually can make you understand kind of what you're shooting and how it's going to look a little bit easier, especially combined with that live view. Okay, leave any comments if you've got them below. And that's all for this week, guys. I've got a few busy day ahead of me. I need to photograph at least another six or seven places. And I've got to drive on back to Istanbul. So for now... Bye-bye.